We're back working on our 302 small block Ford. Today we're installing a set of roller rocker arms. Uh, the ones I've got are from Assault Racing Products. They're full roller rockers, uh, 1.7 ratio. So when you switch to roller rockers, first thing you need is guide plates. Because uh, full roller rockers float freely. So there's nothing to hold them centered, they just can float, so you need these guide plates to keep them centered. When you use guide plates, you also need hardened push rods. Um, got some hardened chromoly push rods here. Uh, first thing you need to do before you install your push rods and your rocker arms, just take a glance, make sure you can see all the way through your push rod down the oil feed hole, make sure that's clear. Same thing with your oil feed holes in your rocker arms, make sure you can see all the way through those. Uh, with the cheaper rocker arms I got from Assault Racing, uh, out of the 16, I had five of them with crap down in the oil feed holes. Uh, one of them had uh, some aluminum shavings in one of the holes. Three of them had a little burr on this uh, steel seat insert. Uh, one of them actually had uh, the oil feed hole in that steel seat hadn't been machined through all the way so I had to drill it all the way out. Um, that one would have been an issue. The one with the burr and the little aluminum shaving probably wouldn't have caused any detrimental damage, but uh, it's good to make sure they're clear before you install them or else you might have some oil feed issues and start burning stuff up. One more thing to check for, especially if you're switching to a higher ratio rocker arm like these 1.7 arms, to make sure your cylinder head is clearanced enough to where your push rod doesn't hit the side of the cylinder head because uh, when you go to a higher ratio arm it brings the push rod closer to the pivot point here which will bring it closer in on the head so if you pull your rod out of the lifter a little and then push it all the way down to where it's rubbing on the head and then just bring it forward and make sure it has a little bit of travel outwards before it seats in the lifter that uh, that way you know it's not going to be grinding on the head as it's moving this is a hydraulic roller motor so you're going to want between 20 thousandths and 60 thousandths of preload on your lifters uh, so the first thing you got to do is get your cam to a position where your lifters are in their lowest position so right now we're at top dead center both the valves should be closed all the way and then you have to find your zero preload so you just spin your uh, push rod and slowly tighten the nut down by hand until you have just a little bit of resistance to spinning and then you have zero preload so most people say you dial in between a quarter turn and a full turn of preload um, that's a pretty accurate ballpark but I'm going to show you a way to actually measure your preload. Um, if you have a caliper and you get it in line with the push rod and just seat it between the the bottom of the rocker arm and the cylinder head in line with your push rod, just open it up and zero it. about a half turn there and 38 thousandths of preload. Since we now know that half turn equals about 38 thousandths preload which is well in spec we can dial in our half turn and then holding the nut uh, we can tighten down the lock, lock screw 
and tight. I'm sure there's a torque spec, but good and tight is probably just fine. And that should be all there is to it. So a half turn of preload on the rocker arm is a pretty good guideline to follow. Uh, it'll work for most practical applications. Uh, if you're building a race motor or something, or you're just really anal about uh, how you set your stuff up, another way you can check the preload on all of your rocker arms is to get them set to zero preload. And then use a little feeler gauge and just set it right next to the push rod on top of the guide plate and then lightly scratch the line in this is a 35,000 feeler I got in there so if you lightly scratch the line in the push rod and then just dial it down until that line is even with the uh, top of your guide plate and that's another way you can check on how much preload you have dialed down one thing I forgot to mention if you can see the flat spot milled, in, milled on the top of the pin that the rocker arm rides on, you always have to make sure that goes up. That gives the nut a flat surface to seat against. Uh, it'll have one side of the flat machine surface and the other side will just be the rounded unmachined pin. So make sure that flat side goes upwards.